Morning, people. Today we have André. Uh, he will talk about bioinformatic analysis using Docker in Conda environment. André, for those who don't know, is a former CSBL post postdoc. And now he's in Liverpool uh, working in the LSTM is a long, a long name. <laughs> I, I will not try to tell you what it, it means, but Andrea, you present himself. And thank you, Andrea, for your time and be my guest. Yeah, thank you, Anna, for the introduction. So, yeah, I, I'm in, in Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine doing my another postdoc. So and then today I introduce you how to use Docker and Kong environment for bioinformatic analysis. But before I have some um, uh, things to, to talk with you is what we, we will and will not see in this course. So we will uh, work with Docker, like uh, download, and delete doc image, start, stop, and delete doc container, uh, submit this Docker container to, to the Doc Hub account. So we will see what, what is uh, Doc Hub. Uh, Seven load doc images locally, uh, create and remove doc uh, con environment, install packages inside con environments. And we will not see in this uh, lab training any detail about bioinformatic analysis, uh, build up a bioinformatic pipeline scripts, any uh, analyze real data sets, and we will not learn a Linux shell command line. So we focused only in Docker and in environments and how to use these two technologies to do uh, a reproducible bioinformatic pipelines. So I looked in, in, the, in the lab training sheet, uh, some lab training we did, we, we had uh, before, uh, and I think uh, some of these, uh, some of those uh, can help us in this lab training. There are a lot of, a lot of uh, lab training about the bioinformatic analysis, like single cell uh, gene transcript uh, identifications, uh, expression, uh, image analysis, how to use MI2 or machine learning. But I, I would like to highlight it, uh, two of them. Uh, is a workflow managed system. How to use snake make was performed uh, by Ikaru. And the introduction to Git uh, uh, performed by Bernardo. There are two important lab training for this one specifically. And the rest of them, you can use this structure uh, to do uh, the others analysis. So before to enter in the Docker or Conda uh, details, I'd like to, to show you uh, the our CSBL HPC structure. So now we have uh, uh, two uh, servers. Uh, the name is CSBL 02 and CSBL 03. And uh, we have uh, another server, the name is head node, and two storage with uh, five terabytes in storage, and I think. 20 terabytes in iOmega. So, but to run something inside the cell bell too, so we need to access from uh, internet, depending if you are accessed by uh, your home or, or USB uh, network. So we need to connect first in the head node. And inside the head node, you connect it to cell bell too and then you can process uh, your analysis and other things. So in the in this server, of course, we have a more uh, uh, comp 
compute power, like uh, 32 cores, 100 gigabytes of RAM, and two terabytes of a physical uh, hard drive. So, but the problem with this uh, structure is if you if you need to save a, a, a lot of data in a computer in a server, so you build uh, you can use this hard drive here is a physical in this as well too, or use the the storages. So, but the problem is uh, you read and write data in storage, you will do this main time. And this connection between Salesbell to head node and the IOMega, for example, is by network. So when we have a, bot a bottleneck here, when you write and you read many times, and the entire system will be uh, frozen when you copy uh, or paste data directly to storage. So when the idea uh, is to do this once and save the all data you need to do a specific analysis in the cell spell tool in the specific high drive. So, but the, yeah, and maybe you can uh, read and write many times uh, without uh, pass through the, the network. So in the new structure, in the probable new structure, uh, uh, we suggest, and it probably will be the, the our, our next uh, structure is this one. So we connect it uh, to the cell spell 02, for example, directly, okay? We don't need to connect the head load first and then jump to cell spell 2. And if you want to do some uh, analysis, of course, you can write and read from uh, directly from uh, storage or copy the data to the the local the local hard drive and it reads in the write locally. And the same thing for Seth Beltry. So he will be connected by Starwise, and we can do the same. Uh, thing here in Sasbel 2, in Sasbel 3. Sorry, Andrea, and for interrupting, but there is some problem with your voice. I don't know your mic. Yeah, I will. I can prepare it to this problem. Let's see if I change. Let's see if it's better now or your voice sounds like a little metallic. <laughs> metallic, like a robot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I can do. Let me see. Microphone. Okay, people so, are just saying yeah. that's okay. So yeah, you can, the, yeah, you can go. Okay. All right. So, so the idea of this new structure will be uh, the cell to be connected to IOMega or Solaris, but each storage will be connected in a specific uh, server. So, but we can discuss it after about these, these details. So let's see now how to use Docker and Econda together. So before to, to see any details about the, the Docker, how to create a, a container, how to download a specific image, or how to create a, a Conda environment, uh, I will show you uh, an example. So I sent to you uh, this uh, GitHub repository with the, um, uh, some details to install Docker for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. 
So in that we show you how to uh, execute this specific pipeline from scratch. So our view starts. Uh, sorry. So the first thing I need to do is download the the specific conda, the specific Docker in image. So I will open here my terminal. And I need to change here the local machine folder path to this specific one. In my case, of course. So when they run this command, Docker run. So the, the image was downloaded uh, successfully and the, the Docker started the, the Linux distribution in my Windows machine. So now I can uh, type some comment, uh, Linux comment. So, but let's back here. So I will update this. Linux, upgrade. Install its top. And we can see uh, I have uh, eight cores in this specific machine and 12 gigabytes of RAM. So the next step is install Mamba. I prefer to use Mamba to install packages is faster compared to Conda, but you need Conda installed together uh, to work well. So. Let's wait a minute. So don't worry, uh, you can, we, we will do this uh, together when I enter in the Docker and the con the details, we will, do the, we will do this together. So install Mamba. SSL to initialization, initialize the number. It's okay. And now I will access my specific folder. So let's do, remove this first. So when I will clone this repository, enter in this folder from the repository and create a Conda environment with a name tutorial. So it's, I demonstrate how it would be like, a, I need to do a specific analysis and how I'm doing now. So I have a, a, my a Docker image. I'll download my image, configure my conda with the programs with a specific versions, BSAF tools and tools, BWA, and then execute my, my pipeline. So in few minutes, I can configure my, my entire uh, uh, computational environment to do bioinformatic analysis. So this pipeline, I uh, manually will wait for this installation. 
I will show you the pipeline uh, I used for this example. I got from the Snake Make uh, website. So I, I left this, uh, this link in the GitHub repository, and then you can access that. So when this uh, specific pipeline is to uh, uh, variant calling. So when here you can see how to create each row to run this specific pipeline. So I will not do this all steps here. I will just you get the entire pipeline and it's a good answer. So it will be this one. Okay. Doesn't matter this any details now here, it's only the, the execution and the Docker and the corner uh, configurations. Yeah, when you wait for the, this download and the installation, I will talk about the, the Docker. So uh, one thing I do now is, uh, of course, you can uh, you can you can download an image, for example, Ubuntu image or, or mini tree image, and configure your container for everything you need to do. In, the, in that specific project. So then, and then you can save this container to use the feature. For example, to, to reanalyze uh, the specific uh, project or to do a similar uh, analysis to another project. So that's a, uh, and you can use the Docker Hub. Docker Hub is, guy, uh, is like a GitHub. It's a GitHub for, for Docker images. So, but if you, you have a, a sensitive data and then you, can, you can't uh, share because you, you, you uh, left the, the, the Docker, uh, your Docker help will be a, a public account. So if you not to share your sensitive data, you can save the, the image locally and put in the Google Drive or on or, or all the storage or your external hard drive. So you choose what is the best uh, option for you. So, but of course you can, um, for example, in this SPL, you, we usually use uh, the published data to do some analysis. So then you can, uh, you can Create a snake make pipeline to download it, uh, uh, the samples from SRA or Geo. And then you can just create uh, scripts with the structures to download and execute your, your pipeline. So, depends on the work, of course, you need to keep this data in your machine, or you just can download it from internet and execute them. So here you can see the, the Conda is installing the OWL package. I need to, I put, I don't know, five or six uh, packages to install, but the Conda check the OWL dependencies to run, to that uh, six, uh, five or six uh, packages running well. So in this case, there are many packages here. It's important for that uh, tools.
So after to install, after to create and install all, all packages inside the tutorial environment, I will activate this specific environment. So and we can see here the the comment. So I we are now in the base uh, environment and we activate it to tutorial. So now if I type BWA version of recognized, you can see the that BWA working in the tutorial environment. If I activate the conductivate base, I come back to the base environment and type BWA, uh, the command not found because this specific uh, tool was installed in the tutorial, not in base. But let's continue. Okay. Example. So and finally, I can run the snake make pipeline. So I just um, type snake make cores. And in this case, I selected seven cores because I have eight cores, and I like to use the all cores uh, less one. So in this case, they can make cores seven. And my, my pipeline is working now to mapping and to detect the, the variations in the genome and plot a figure. So now I can access my folder. and access the results. And then you can see here the mapped reads, sorted reads, and here is the final, the final figure. So it could be a, a volcano plot, a heat map, or all of them all of them in our results uh, directory. So in this case, is this bar plot. So then I can do this for every pipeline. So uh, I have a, a study I'm doing now for Hessel's project from, from Mariana uh, PAT. And I, me and Patricia are building up the, the snake pick pipeline to do this analysis. And we can run in any place. So here in my machine, or in the SaaS server, or in the Google Cloud platform, for example. So and now we will uh, learn how to download the Docker image, how to create the container, how to enter in the container. Everything will be necessary now. We will not see everything because there are a lot of details, but we will see the details enough to, to do our analysis and the, and the content as well. So uh, one, one more thing important in the Docker is that the Docker structure is we have uh, the operating system, could be Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. And above the operating system, of course, we will have a, a Docker app. You download it and install it these days. And we can download images. Images uh, is a it's like a file with structures to to do a specific tasks. So I have a in this course we have in this lab training we have a, a, a Docker image for a mini conda tree, and the the 
the main goal of these images, uh, you download the Debian Linux uh, distribution with a code already installed. So any container is a, a, a element of Docker use these instructions to give you uh, a service working well, okay? So let's go to the, the, the GitHub. So you can open this GitHub now. And of course, you can run this, uh, uh, this part here with the how to, to create a Docker container from scratch. And there's a key to this specific pipeline, but of, of course you can execute for, for your pipelines, independently if you use a snake make or not. So here there are some details about Docker. We have the three uh, important things in Docker. There's a Docker file, and you can see more details in this text. So, but uh, this Docker file is before the doc image. You can build your image and create a specific uh, tasks in this in this image. But this isn't our uh, idea now because sometimes this file is could be com complex, and and we not we want to to give more uh, easy things for, for everybody. So a uh, Docker image container in Docker. So the first thing we need to learn is, it's important, of course, install the Docker app in our operating system. Uh, but the first thing is a downloaded, uh, uh, download a Docker image. So you can find uh, a specific image in Docker Hub. So I need to put the website here, but it's so easy to find. Is uh, you can type it Docker Help in the Google or access this uh, link here. So help dot docker dot com, and then you can type anything here. So I will type uh, Ubuntu, for example, and then you can see. Uh, a Docker official image for Ubuntu. In our case, we will type in mini on the tree and we use this verified function. So I like I like this uh, Docker image because you don't need to install the Docker. So I start to prepare this lab, this lab training using the Ubuntu image but the problem we need to install the, the Conda there or the mini or mini Conda. So in this case, you downloaded this uh, Docker image with a Debian distribution. Is a, a distribution was uh, Ubuntu was was based on. So you use the apt apt update apt install as 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 Ubuntu. So here, uh, after you access this uh, Docker image, mini corner tree, you can copy this command here, Docker pull command, okay? And open your terminal. If you are using Windows, I prefer to use the PowerShell because you can use some uh, command like uh, Linux, or if you use in the the Linux, open the the, the the Linux terminal, or in the Mac, the same thing. So, zip here. So we we need to guarantee you are executing our machine. You can see by this uh, this information here. I'm in Windows now, and I can download this specific 
Docker image. So when you can run now the machine to download this one, but I downloaded before to run the our example. So let's come back to Andre. Yeah. Uh, Icaro asked, uh, can we use this Docker Miniconda as the default Docker image and create other images based on this one? Yeah, definitely. You can use for everything. So, of course, I used to do that specific analysis, but if you let us show you. So, here I this command download and execute in my container. Download the image and execute the container. So until here, until here, here, I can use this uh, container for any analysis. So one only one thing I need to change is the conda environment. So this is specific conda environment. Let us show you this environment in YAL file when you can see and you can see here I use this make make minimal and some packages specific for that analysis but you can for example you can install Kaiju or bow title here in another on the environment. So, yeah, I'm here. So if you yeah, download that is done, you can execute the Docker images with S at the end, and we will see the all images you have in your computer. Okay, so here I have a button because I was using a button before to know about this mini content. And I have uh, my own uh, Docker image. I named it HPC. So let's start. Uh, we have a, a image. So only instructions to how that uh, uh, Docker will work when you create a, a container. So to do, to do this, we we'll, we need to to execute this command. So I we'll put side by side. Let me see with the book. Not too much. So I'm here. So uh, Docker run minus I minus T. Uh, minus T. I will. Oh, sorry, it's before. Is here. Sorry. Remove this D. And we gave a name for this container based on this specific image. Here I'm, I'm mapping this volume. As a Docker, you are creating a it's like a virtual machine, but it's not a virtual machine. So you create a, a Linux a system above the, the Windows in my case. So, in, but you need to mapping a specific folder from your local machine to your container machine. Okay. So minus V, you put the 
the path. I usually do this. I select here in my local machine. What is the path I will consider it my route or I will map it. I copy this and paste here. And I will map with uh, two dots. I think we say it this way. I will map two dots home. You can map in any uh, any folder in your container. I think I like to use home, but you can map any place. That's two. And I will inform the image name and the comments I will run that will be a bash. It's a it's a terminal. Bash is a terminal. So let's recap here. So Docker run to run a container based on this specific image I've downloaded. Menus I menus T. It's uh, related to the comments, you, but you can check in the documentation after. But you, you will use this all time. Uh, name to specify a specific uh, name for the container. Uh, here the um, uh, map pivolo. I'm mapping the my my document project folder to home. I inform here the name of the image and the program I will execute. So if I execute this now, I'm now in this specific container here. You can see here, uh, we changed to PS, user, granicolau, to base, root, and this, uh, uh, a container ID. So now I can execute any Linux command. So if I access the my home, it will be the same. In this home, it will be the same in the my local machine. Andre, we have another yeah. question. Yeah. Uh, Mauro is asking, how can I access the files on my machine from the Docker machine? Yeah, yeah. This this way, Mauro. I think we have a delay, but I can explain again to 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 be more clear. So, when you create a uh, a container, you need to specify uh, your local folder to the container folder. So if you, I, I'm using the terminal because I think I, I think the most of, of the people in the lab use Linux, but you can do this another way. If you are using the Windows and Mac, you can access Docker app. So here you have uh, images. For example, can, I can create another container based on this specific image. So I run, uh, expand these optional settings. I give a name, sales bell two. And here, the host. Path and the container path. I like to use home, but you can use anyone. And you can do many different uh, volume mapping. So when I run, it will create a, a CS Bell 2 and can access the 
the command line here. So, but in this case, he started, maybe you cannot see, but there's a, a bin sh. So you just need to type dash and you will access the same terminal we accessed before. So we close this container, stop here. I'm sorry, I'm not showing you the mapping, but I will show you now in the, another container. So I will remove this. I will close and create another one. So docker run minus it name. And here mapping the volumes the local folder and the folder in the container, the, the Docker name and the command I used here. So when I connect, when I enter the home, for example, inside Docker con the sales bill, I will touch uh, test TSV. And when I go to the Docker CSBL, I have the same file there, here. If I change, and save, I can see this information there. Because it's the same file, it's not a copy. So the next uh, process is how to exit or how to live in the Docker container. You use a, a Linux command, so exit. But before to exit, I will show you here. The sales bell five I now is running. If I exit, it will stop the specific container. Okay. Andre. Yeah. Uh, Icaro is asking, can I run an external script or command inside the container? Yeah, you can in this. It's, yeah, it's a good question because, um, for example, let's, uh, this is a little bit more complicated because you need to create a doc file. If I understood you, got weaker, but I, I know what we want to see, to, to say is uh, instead to execute the bin bash, execute the specific uh, uh, script here, but in this, in the yeah, this is one one thing you can execute here. For example, home pipeline sh, and what we Docker we do is download this specific image. If we will not download it yet, create a container, execute this script. After finish this script, he will stop the container and and you can access the results in your local folder. That's one way to, to execute like a um, external script. So but another if you have the scripts uh, uh, complete outside of your docker, you can't you can't uh, execute in your Docker. So you need to copy the, your script to the, the map, map it volume and access by uh, access inside the, the Docker container. So but the, 
Yeah, they, you need to copy some way. But if so, you are already inside your uh, your folder, you just need to. You can do Bing Bash and run the same script from the Bing Bash. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I have a plan to because usually in the uh, uh, AWS or Google Google Cloud platform is is a little bit too, a little bit different, but in the Google in the Google Cloud platform we work like this. So we, we will run Bing Bash. And you, 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 you will have a, a terminal to do your pipeline there. So using Snake Snake, for, for example. But I think in the AWS, you can't, uh, you can do something like this. So is it the pipeline? And here we create a, a container there. Is it could everything for you? And then Inside your pipeline, you need to, to prepare the, the transferring your, your result data to, to, to your bucket or to your Google Drive or, or your local machine. Because then, in, after you start the machine, they, you, they will uh, build for you. So if you start the machine and do nothing, we will pay some dollars for it. Icaro said, I want to create a command call in Docker for using star. For using star, yeah. Let's, I, I will show you this. We have an arrow here, but we, we will talk about in a few minutes. So I tried to use Sales Bell too, but I is already in use by container specific. So I will create another one. I will do. I don't know how to install the star in Conda. So then what I do, I type Conda install star. And he gave me how to do this. You need a specific channel bioconda. I will clean the, the terminal only to be better to see. So I will I will I will start in the base only to, to show you. But of course, the better practice create a specific code environment to do this. So now I in Docker container, I can execute. When I use the ah, styles cupcakes. Now I can execute star genome here, read genome D information, of course. I will see. Okay. So we, we will work like our server now. In our local machine. And I'm using Windows. That's a, a important information. So I doesn't matter if you're using Linux, Mac, or Windows, you will have the same uh, environment to work. Nice. Uh, we have two more questions. Uh, yeah. Juan, Juan said, with this with this command we just run, can I access this container in another desktop, maybe via Docker Hub? 
yes so we you need to save so after you finished in this for example in this if you work a machine you don't have access uh, remote remotely access to to the machine you can send this specific container to docker hub and then download in another machine and continue your work on that so it's totally possible i have for example in my docker hub i have three images i think so yeah I have three images. This two is the same, almost the same. So the server is uh, Ubuntu, and I installed some things there. HPC is a uh, the same proposal, so to process things, and I have I Studio a server in a container. So and before to move to here, I was using. Um, this R Studio. So when that there are everything installed in this R Studio, I don't I don't need to install anything. If I if my machine broke, I can buy another one. If I have a money, of course, and download this specific uh, Docker image and come back to work in few minutes. So it depends of your internet connection. So following Juan questions, Thomas asked, I'm running this default Miniconda tree image to run my container. When I install something and close the image, do I lose everything or is the image updated? No, you not close, you not uh, lost everything you installed. I show you here in the Docker structure. So in the Docker structure, if you uh, the image will not you not change the image when you create the container, image is only a uh, uh, instructions how this container will work. If you close the container, we can execute the, the same container again. I'll show you now. That will be we will come back to to my script, but don't worry, you can make a question. So uh, if you understand this is the, the main goal today. So if you execute Docker container LLS, we will show nothing because the, the default uh, parameter here is show only the container is running now. And I don't have any container running now, so we can put minus a, and we can see all containers here. So, for example, I installed the, the star in the cells bell tree. Oops, sorry. So you can to exec, execute again the the container. We execute content docker exec minus it it again and you can get in this case you can use the docker uh, image name so you can use this name here or this code here i will use the name and bin bash because I, I will use the terminal.
It's not too funny. All right, I don't remember this specific comment, but you, I will show you from the Docker app. But I will check and I will update the GitHub repository only to, to be not waste of time here. So you can start and yeah, maybe, uh, let's see, let's do stop. Stop it so the comment restart. Yeah, sometimes you can try in different ways. In my case, I use the doc app, so then I don't need to to use this command. But if you use the Linux, you will use it, definitely. So Docker starts, and we can execute the Docker container now else. And we'll see the sales bell tree running now. And now we can enter in the sales bell tree using being dash and I can use the start again so we will not lost the information if he, if your machine if you restart your machine we will lose all contents but if you keep it in Windows not in Windows not I think in Linux yes I need to check but uh, you can recover your Docker anytime. And the mapping as well. So you can see here, I list the home, I can access the semi mapping there. So, and, okay, if you exit, so in this case, I leave the Docker container. So I will execute container LLs. And the, this specific container continue running in background because I started manually. And we can see here, running but for example i will run i will remove this name you will understand why and execute so i have a linux it's not the sas bell tree it's another one if i check here it's an interesting dance if you not specify the name, the Docker will specify for you uh, randomly words. So you have here busy, busy move. So if I exit this container to use my my local terminal, the container will be stopped, but keep it there. If I execute the same command. He will create another one. A cursing Perlman. You know? So you need to be careful not to create a, a lot of containers based on the same image 
because we are using uh, hard drive space in this case. So take care. Because of this, I prefer to use a name, specify a name. If I if I execute the Docker run again, it will give me an error because I'm using this name. And I tell you here, if you want to create ONS, your machine, and put in the background, you use this parameter here, minus D from detach, detach. You detach the terminal and continue in Windows, uh, in my case, Windows command line. So let's clean this screen. So I will execute docker run minus it minus d. I will specify a name and my local folder. The docker image name, beam mesh. So in the result will be a code correspond to this container was created and now you can execute that doc exec minus it sales bell six being bash before to run this I will show you here the sales bell six is running and now I can access this specific container. If I close the container, if I leave the container, it will continue running. So I work, uh, here we work, uh, we use a, a, a Linux server, a uh, Windows server, and I, I use the same container, me and Patricia. So if I exit from the container, it will continue uh, running and Patricia can go there and access the clear or access by Windows terminal and work. And how to stop the Docker container? I use the I can use the Docker uh, container stop sales bell and the name of container or the container ID. So I will stop search bell six. And why stop it? I will stop this as bell tree as well because we will delete these containers. So when we see this now, uh, before, to be honest, so to use the same images to create uh, different containers. So you type Docker images. We continue have three different uh, images, so when you can use uh, many times the same images. I use the this mini conda image for let me see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different containers, and the. The programs was installed in each one container is different. Okay. The volume is the same. I think. Yeah, if the volume is the same. Of course, we're not uh, using the two different containers at the same times, but could happen. And it, 
and the Docker and the Windows will manage how to to lock. Maybe, probably lock, uh, Docker will lock that specific file if you are changing the SSBL tool. And if you try to open the SSBL tree at the same time, not possible. Probably. I never tested this before, but I think he will lock it in a specific container. Uh, the container LS, I show you, and how to uh, exec. I need to put here the, the start, okay? So, but we will go to the, the, the who are questions, uh, how to use the same container, will configure before in other machine. So the container we used to be used to the example, I think was this one. Let me see. Let me see quickly here in the comment. So I don't specify the name, so then was defined by Docker. So it probably was this one. So easy move. I can get the name, but I will get the code this time. The container ID, docker start, the container ID, docker exec. This container ID, I will execute the bash. On the activate tutorial, yeah, I'm right. So I know what is the container. Sorry. Let's to clean this many containers here before to submit to uh, Docker Hub. So I will delete this container here. Go to container RM. Append from remove. This one. When you can see here, we reduced the, the containers. Okay, we are deleting now. And this one as well. I think you can delete it, uh, many containers in one more comment, but I never needed it before, so then I don't know how. So it's now three. Now it says bill. So we will every time type Docker something. So we have now three uh, different containers and only one for Miniconda. And this, this uh, container is specific for uh, the, the example I did in the beginning. So the first thing to do to uh, submit your container to the hub is you need to log in in Docker Hub, so login and specify your username.
okay to be successed uh, the next is list your containers and you will uh, do a docker com committee and change here the docker the container id will be the container you want to submit to docker hub and here I will change all the, I don't know if you can use the uppercase sales bell course. So commit, this command will get our information from your Docker container and save our image for, for this container. We can see it here. And he will pause the container. If you are running something, he will pause and then save an image. That's a good thing because if you change something in your, in your system, it probably will broke your image. So because of this, they pause first to save an image. So uh, take a time. So I hope you are trying to execute this comment. I know I realized how I am going a little bit fast. So, but you can see our comments in the GitHub repository. And yeah, I think it is, uh, in, and we are in the Docker yet. So we will enter in the corner in a few minutes. Well, while we wait, we have some comments, not questions, but uh, Icaro said it would be good to have a CSBL starter pack Docker container with the common tools that we use in the lab, a Megazord container. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. So, but you need to think uh, two situations is uh, that's the problem if you have a Megazord uh, Docker container. You will have a, a contain a huge container. So and you will waste more time to commit if you need. And waste more time to submit to Docker Hub. So when we need to think how is the best practice, maybe uh, uh, like like if you prefer 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 the power ranges we can create a a, diff, a different con development files it'd be like a watch from the the, the power ranges and then when you want to to do something you can more far in a specific ranger and work and after you work, you can remove your Cosmos, a PowerBench Cosmos, and you know, you keep the only a uh, text file for your work. I don't know if it makes sense for you, but. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned it before, but that is also a Docker desktop for Linux. Yeah, probably, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I, I am seeing here. Yeah, probably you can find this. Yeah, I never used this before, but uh, probably has. A, you can, that's a good thing to do is uh, type anything here. In so, yeah, that's a lot of memory. Okay. 
Maybe someone, someone tried a desktop, Linux desktop, using a Docker, but I've never seen this before. So let's see. Yeah, maybe. Close some things. So I will open another terminal. To work in parallel. So Docker, run, and I can put together this um, Single parameters. Sales BL. Um, you. Yeah, the system is slow because of this specific command. So you, you do execute usually overnight or on an hour you're not using your computer. Icaro asked how Docker deals with parallelization. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have cores to, to parallelize, Docker, Docker will be a Linux system, a simple Linux system. So, all commands, like all time, you can specify the cars you have in your machine. So, if, for, for example, in this specific machine, I have about eight cores, but I can, if I need more cores, I can use the our Windows server here, has 20 cores. If I need more memory, I can execute uh, in the SaskBell server uh, that has a uh, 100 gigabytes of run. If I need both, much more, I can execute in the Google Cloud platform. I think that a, a machine of 400 cores with uh, 15 terabytes of run. You can use this machine that using the same uh, image. But of course, you need to plan what you need to do there, because uh, since you start the machine, you will be uh, built by each minute you are running. 
So when it is huge machine is almost five dollars per minute. Depends of you need depends of depends of how you need to do that. Could be nice. So you you run so fast and stop a machine uh, fastly. Compare if you get a machine with a maybe a 60 pace per minute and spend a, a lot of time to execute your, your task. So you need to find a, a balance between the, the compute power and how much time you need to execute a specific task. Or if your pipeline has, a, for example, transcriptome transcriptal pipeline, usually you map and then you can parallelize this, this process. But if you do a, a DSEC2, for example, if you're not prepared the SEC2 for parallelize, you will run only one core for, for this task, and then you waste money. So now I prefer to mapping and annotation in cloud and the rest of the work uh, finished here on the Windows Server or in my local machine. So I will stop this uh, and I will show you offline. So we will commit this is specific, uh, this specific container in this new image. So the name we defined here, of course, we need to, to have uh, your user and the image name, you can define anyone. And this name and this image will be uh, appear here with an, uh, a new image ID will be a, a new image, completely different from Miniconda tree, for example, because you have many things you installed there before. After this, you will see the images, and we get this image ID, So we will get this image ID for the new one, of course. And put here, and it will create this tag. Only to, it's like a modification for your, a tag a modification for your new image. And then push your new image to the Docker Hub. And everyone can access your, your your new image after this push. Okay. And to download your image in another machine, like uh, who mentioned before, you access your dog hub, for example, this one. If you access your, the, this specific repository for server, this image, you need to change for public view. And it's the same comment from uh, Miniconda tree. Docker pool, Anikolau is the user uh, provide the, providing the Docker image and the name of Okay, image. If I run this here, okay. you download this specific image from, in this case, from Ubuntu image and I installed many things there.
So, but you can uh, save your image after the commit. If you create an image based on your container, you can save locally. Uh, execute doc save your image on the image ID. Save to the specific file. Is a compressed file. If you want to rise again this uh, image, you use Docker load input in this specific file you saved it before. Okay, so I did this for uh, CSBL server in the, the the current version, the current structure. The CSBL two, the CSBL three don't have connection to the internet. So in the, how to execute doc, Docker pull or Docker push in the CSBL 2 or 3 now. So I, I executed this in my local machine and I transferred this uh, file to the server and I execute that, the load, and then I could to run, exec, and work in the CSBL 2 or 3 in the current uh, structure. This will change in the, in the new structure. So let's go to the code environment. So I will stop with this because this image is huge. So we yeah, need to check first which components I'm running now. So I will access the SASBEL tree. Exact So in the Docker environment, uh, the idea of the Docker, the, of the cold environment is uh, install is a, a environment management. And the idea is uh, install everything in the base and this base will be uh, stored in the specific uh, location of machine in this specific uh, Mini Conda image is stored in property Conda, but it doesn't matter this information. Uh, and here you can see the all uh, environment are installed in this, or are created in this uh, container. In this case, there is anyone there. The base beans are the all programs from base are here in the OPT OPT called the bean. The all command is here. So you can create a, another environment completely separately from base. So you execute conda, create. Uh, let me see. Yeah. I use my his name tutorial for uh, RNA seek.
তাহলে আই নিড সো উই গো টু দিস ডক্টর Otherwise, we won't finish this today. So let's move, start gently first. I think we are back now. So I, I will describe it what we will do now and then when Docker come back and we can execute in the terminal. So the first thing is create a uh, environment.
with this comment here. Uh, Con decorate in the name of the this specific environment. It's a tutorial, but you can create here already see single cell uh, environment for a specific analysis. Okay. So after creating the the conda environment, so you can activate this environment. So here you have a base. You can install uh, essential programs in base and specific things in the code environment. After you activate, you change here from base to tutorial. And in this case, I install a member because it's better in terms of installation, member is better than Conda. And I prefer to use Mamba instead on it. And I can use it. Can you zoom it, please? Yeah. So to create, on the creates uh, with a name tutorial, call the activate to start to use this specific code environment and we change to tutorial instead base I used Mamba to to install package and for example I want to install both title in the tutorial code the environment I execute this comment here Mamba install uh, Voltai is not a, a common package, so is inside the Bioconda channel. Channel is like a repository, so it's a different repository from a, a, a base repository. You can install Tmux sometimes, uh, Linux commands in the Conda. So Bioconda is for a specific uh, bioinformatic tools. And you need to specify uh, this channel to install some some packages. So I used in the tutorial here. I need to change because it doesn't work well. But I I will show you here before in an example. I did this uh, environment before, so you can do from two different ways. So you can create a, uh, an environment manually and install each uh, program you need to run there manually. And after you, uh, I think I have a good uh, code environment for that specific task. So you you can save. Our program is not con environment working now to a specific file and they use in other containers or in other machines. So when we we will see how to export this this file here. Yeah. Okay, but I need to check because you I'm inside the specific tutorial called development and I tried to update the uh, package using the environment YAL file. So what doesn't but yeah, it doesn't matter now this information. So you can create manually and then export the our package that you have installed your machine so you can add channel as i think ikaru asked about the default image for different containers so you can add this bioconda for example inside your conda configuration file so and you can remove this information from from your 
comment. I think it's a good it's a good idea. So another thing I I look for for many months about this information when I saw in the in the, in the huge Conda documentation is uh for example you have a uh, uh, some package installed in base and then you install the specific uh, package in tutorial or single cell but you want to use the the package from base as well so if you activate using this command here for example we have a star in the base and BWA in the tutorial. If you are inside the tutorial, we don't have access to Easter in the base. So in my idea was, uh, come on, we, we can create a, a base with a, a common programs and specific conditions for specific uh, tasks or programs. So and you can do you can do a nested activation. So next nested activation is you reactivate it a specific uh environment and you still have access to base uh, packages. So I think it's more complicated if you have a, the same program in the base and a specific on the environment. So, but it's a, it's a way to, to manage, okay? Sometimes uh, I talked with you, with you, with Icaro about this. Sometimes he, he observed uh, that some programs work well with, uh, with others in a specific versions. So if you have a multi tool in a specific in a version 2, 10, working both with a send tools 1.9. But the multi tool, what I want, work well with a send tools 1.8, for example. So in this case, you need to activate completely separately the the con development for multi tool and multi one. For example, and finally, you can uh, deactivate this specific Conda environment and come back to the base, or you can activate the base. It will be the same process, or activate another uh, Conda environment. Let to check the yeah cool. So I will start from here. So in the windows is not like a button you click you you see it, the button comes down and up. So sometimes you press and nothing's happening, but you need to be patient and wait a moment to click again. And in my case, I explode in my memory. So. access from here so 
So that's to install Yukunda Ista in the base. Here we can execute stuff. If I activate tutorial, we can check first. Yeah. We have so we have two base and tutorial. It's complete uh, separate. So if I activate tutorial, I change here base tutorial. If I try to execute star, work it. Let's see the version. Is it same? to check where is this came from this stuff from yeah okay this book so never mind what I said before so you can use the programs from base in a specific code environment but keep in your mind this information because sometimes uh, I don't know if I installed using Mamba and remember, I take care about our things. So you can use these packages in your specific uh, code environments. So let's create a new code environment named RNA Seek. RNA Seek. And it will save in the default uh, path. So uh, I agree. Activate already seek. Let's do check the star here. Yeah, work it. And be that be that again. It's not possible because I start only the tutorial called the environment. So I will install Mayokunda Boltai 2. I will use Conda because I will need to download one again here. So the best option is install the Mamba in the base and then use, use it in, in specific Conda units. So but in this case, I will use Conda. I prefer Mamba, but in this case, I will use Conda. And uh, you said you installed the bow tie in the tutorial, right? Can now in, use... In the RNA -seek. No, uh, before. Do you have the bow tie in the tutorial? No. Uh, imagine that you have. Uh, yeah. Can I use that stack parameter to use uh, BWA Boltai in the RNA seq? If I stack tutorial and stack RNA seq, can I use all the? the yeah, I on? think I yeah I don't know if you can stack uh, two different specific code variables. I think so. Then one way you can bypass this. 
So, but he's a he's not it's not the back best practice. I can show you. I show you now how to how to do this. But it's not a bad best best practice to do. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, because in, that's a problem in the our new structure. We will need a more space uh, in the in the hard drive for the system, or when you when we install the code in the server, we need to specify a, uh, a hard drive with a, a lot of space, because if I create my code development using both I two some tools, and then you try to use. Uh, the same structure, but with the same package, but only one more, you duplicate the bot I2. You'll be an RNA seq and an RNA seq ANA, for example. But in terms of uh, reproduce, reproducibility, it's better you, you spend uh, hard drive space than you do this kind of uh, gambiarres, try to combine different uh, code elements. I, I can check after if you can stack uh, different code elements together. So I know that worked with a base and and one more. Yeah, sometimes you need to press enter in the code because he's tucked in the specific page. In. So now I can execute both I2. If I activate tutorial again, and both I, it's not both I2, so now I script from some tools. So if I export, I, I think it's only tutorial. On the cheat sheet. Honda Envy export. So if I execute only this, I need tutorial, and he will show how packets is how packing installed in this specific. Development. So when the, this you save to a file in the yarn. So and you can see, and then you can see here uh, this export. Keep it the version for each package was installed in this uh, code environment. This is important because uh, Python for this specific some tools, no Python version, need be a, a Python three point eight. So I try to install. It. In another way, using Python 3.9, it doesn't work. I think it will be in the 3.10 Python version. So the, the good options to use the YAM file is the Conda will find the best versions for each program and figure out the, the dependencies alone. You will only watch this. Magic. So 
So I go back here in the project, and you can see the YAL file. Yeah, you can keep in this all, all the packages or only you use to install, for example, you install the BSF, B.A. So, tools. so you can select a specific and there are another one here but I will not remember now so you can reduce to geo for because the conda will be looking for that other package in the, the correct versions to samples 1.9, 1.9, and BWA 0.7, working well, working correctly. So here, usually I remove this information because it depends on this, this, this system, this prefix, the menu save, your environment change. So I prefer to remove. So, we save this. Then we change to bio info. And you let to execute the conduct rate minus minus file. is new Know what happened here, but I will create a new file. Get from somewhere that information. So I really know this is not important not now. On the version. See, because I'm I'm in the tutorial on development, I need to on the deactivate, come back to base, and execute again. Let's see if it works. Have you specify the and the name? It's, it's our life, trying and trying until you come back. Yeah. So if you not specify the code environment name here, you will get from the file we use this name here.
So when I and you finish, then he tried to find the packets here. I will finish the this lab training. So at the end, so you will have if you use snake make you do have a, a pipeline like this with uh, of course you will not put your data in the github but you will have a, a data folder with uh, a genome and your samples and scripts if you have someone to do some specific things like DSC2 or semi 2 uh, uh, environments in YAL. So we felt the programs you need to, to use for your pipeline. This is a specific for Snake make where I showed what is the process with the run and the pipeline. So we have the two samples and we we'll, uh, to yeah, we we'll map these two samples first and then sort the burn files, index the burn files, execute the BCF tools call, and finally plot the quality of the virus and of course your script independently if you use a uh, snake make if you are grows or each process or if you use uh, for example I have an example here Well, for example, if you you need only a Conda environment, so you need a Docker container, of course, to to create a system for you and Conda environment. For, for example, this is a specific uh, pipeline to annotate macro-ray uh, probes I did with uh, with Edson. And you have our process to install mini Conda, but now if I redo this pipeline, I will create a, a Docker co container with a mini Conda image. And this will burn it at the same time, because I use Conda to install git that we get and to uh, create uh, my environment of packets I need to do, I need to execute these scripts. So these scripts are, you can see here. The annotator env yaw. So if every time we execute this pipeline, it will be, it will be the same result because I use the same multi version, multi one, multi two, some tools, bad tools, it will be always the same version. Okay, the same our base change for, we change for four version, but it's okay. The idea is have a reproducible pipeline. And the script here is not using snake make. I combined the Perl scripts only to use these fancy parameters, dash dash mapper dash dash platform. Uh, but I, I use a shell script as well to download genome, to map is a uh, in Perl here, but in the middle 
I used the dash scripts, dash commands, and the pipeline is at um, call out steps. So you can use Docker and Conda in any kind of analysis. Yeah, that's that's the problem with a with a Conda to install this many packs. Spend a lot of time in Mamba, it'd be so fast, it'd be so fast. So I think it's all guys, I, I will update uh, this part of Conda as I need to, to improve in some parts of and Docker uh, comments as well. So with you, if you are if you are complicated for you now, you can follow this GitHub uh, repository and try to execute uh, comment by comment. Uh, of course, I'm not. Uh, I talk about how Docker universe, but I think it's only this comment is important to to do the bioinformatic analysis and repeat the results anytime. So if you have a question, you can make now or send me an email or WhatsApp message. Feel free. Okay, thank you, Andre. Uh, we passed two hours of training. I don't know yes. if all the people are here yet, but uh, Frederico said, uh, some time before, I, I, Andre, I think it would be a good talk warning about the Docker vulnerabilities. As yeah. people can, you, you will be able to see this video before. Can you talk a little about this? Yeah, that I think uh, you can see here the, the main vulnerability is the name root and the user. So if you map, imagine, because I'm, I'm the Windows, but I think it would be a decent problem in the Windows. But if we, for example, I will do this. Imagine you do this. You can put together, and after this is a name and mapping. Okay. Here the IO. So I will remove the T here because we after this comment we you have access to okay. So if you, if you are in Linux and then you type you type here slash so you map your root in home and here you can you are root in container you could delete our home you delete our home, you delete our slash. But depends. Uh, I think let's uh, stop with this. I don't know if we will stop today. But I tried to do this in the Linux. I tried.
tried to do this before on the Linux. And I think that uh, there is a message say to you, it's not possible to do this and it will not lost your entire system. So yeah, I think then uh, until I know uh, the, the main vulnerability of uh, containing the video mapping slash to dot home or uh, slash home or other, other folder. Also, Frederico said uh, this is because on Linux the Docker run, run as a daemon with, with all root privileges. This makes it trivial for a malicious user to read and alter sensitive system files. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can, you can put more uh, parameters here to specify or to disable root. Uh, root account and we use the specific uh, user, I don't know, BOE for user. So, but in my, in my case, I use only, only who used the, the container I created, it only me and Patricia, in some of cases only me. In the Salesforce BL, we need to take account into this, this kind of vulnerability. Of course, thank you. Nice. I don't know if Tomas is here yet, but uh, at the start of the training, he asked something about related to the structure of the server. So the question was, what is the point of the red node in this new structure since it is not connected to the process processing nodes or the hard drivers? Hard drivers? Yeah, in this new structure, we we'll, I think Fabio is a, a guy who we'll provide a service to, to change our structure. It will put the head node in another position uh, and we can use the head nodes to process as well. So the, in this structure, I just, in my case, in my opinion, we could, uh, Shut down this, this server. But the problem is, uh, we talk this with uh, uh, Fabio. We, I think we we can we, we could connection now the each uh, storage with our servers. The problem is uh, if you if you work in the same file, in the SASBEL two and three. You need to, to manage this, this uh, make who who is open what which files. So if you open the same in the same file in different servers, we will crash this this file. And there is a protocol to to take care about this this situation. So when I think. Fabio designed a structure connected our, our nodes to our storage. So, and Tomás, uh, we can use the head nodes. It's not like a SSPL2 or 3, but we can use. It. Okay, thank you, Andre. Thank you all that stayed until the end. Uh, if you have any, any more questions, you can reach Andre or uh, use the, the GitHub files and threads. And Andre, thank you again for your time. I'll see you guys next Thursday. See you.